Hello everyone, you are now watching Muslim Logic Fail number 2. In our previous episode, we debunked Adam Saleh's seven mind-blowing miracles of Allah. But after that video came out, I received multiple comments accusing me of going after low-hanging fruit. And, admittedly, they're right. Adam Saleh's basically the Muslim Logan Paul. He's not much of an intellectual challenge. So today, I'll be stepping up my game and responding to Zakir Naik. He's an immensely popular Muslim televangelist with over 17 million likes on Facebook. And just to make sure you know, he even put it in his banner. He also runs a TV network called Peace TV, which apparently reaches over 200 million viewers. So hey, those numbers can't lie, right? Zakir Naik must be spreading some compelling knowledge. What does he have to say about evolution? As far as the question on theory of evolution has come, there is no book so far that I've read which talks about fact of evolution. Theory of evolution means a theory. The statement by itself, theory of evolution, means it's a theory. So there's no proof regarding Darwin's theory at all. It's a theory, it's not a fact. This is a common misconception, but a person as influential as you, Nike, who speaks openly about these topics should know better. Just like how the word bat has two different meanings, so does the word theory. The common definition of theory means an assumption, a guess, conjecture. However, when talking about evolution, we're using the scientific definition of theory. A scientific theory refers to a comprehensive explanation of some aspect of nature that is supported by a vast body of evidence. And some of the evidence for evolution includes the fossil record, homologous structures, biogeography, embryology, molecular biology, and more. Now, if this were a one-off comment from Nike that he later corrected, that would be fine. Nobody's perfect. But he's been spreading this false information for years now. What Darwin said was only a theory. All the books say theory of evolution. There's no book I've come across saying fact of evolution. So this is just a theory. It is not a fact at all. I have not come across a single book which is called as the fact of evolution. This is just an assumption. Because there is no knowledge of the fact, we are taught Darwin's theory as though it's a fact. What does it say about Nike's reliability or even his integrity? when after all this time, he has still failed to correct himself. Aside from evolution, other theories in science include germ theory, atomic theory, and cell theory. So are you going to deny them too because they have the word theory in them? Or do you deny theories only when they go against your book? That may be the case because one theory Nike does accept is the Big Bang Theory. In Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, the ayah I started my talk with. And it says, Avalam yara lazina kafiru. Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. This verse of the glorious Quran speaks about the Big Bang in a nutshell 1400 years ago, which science has discovered recently. So, clove asunder is an old-fashioned way of saying separated. So the verse Nike is citing claims that the heavens and the earth were together and then separated. But is that what the Big Bang theory says happened? No. The Big Bang happened around 13.8 billion years ago, but the Earth didn't form until about 9 billion years later. On the other hand, the Quran verse claims the Earth already existed. So no, this verse is not referring to the Big Bang. What it does sound like, however, is an ancient story from Sumerian mythology called the Song of the Ho, where the god Enlil separates heaven from Earth. And the tablets the story was found on are dated at over 4,000 years old, before the Quran was ever written. Huh. It's almost like Islam borrowed this story from Sumerian mythology. But if Zakir Naik's poor comprehension of the Big Bang and evolution weren't bad enough, let's hear his advice on rape prevention. O oh Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women that when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak, they should put on the jilbab, so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. Quran says, Hijab has been prescribed for the women so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. If you are inviting, then you'll receive. Hey Zakir, if you want to protect women in your country from getting raped and burned alive, maybe you should read more than just a 1300 year old book which condones slavery, child marriage, and beating your wife. The Prophet Muhammad, the founder of your religion, married a six year old girl named Aisha and consummated his marriage with her when she was nine years old. You might as well be getting advice from Bill Cosby or Harvey Weinstein. 
Instead, might I recommend you read this study from the Egyptian Center for Women's Rights, which found that the majority of women in Egypt who were victims of sexual harassment were wearing an Islamic veil. Or this paper from Duke University, which found that women wearing body-concealing clothing are perceived as more passive and submissive, which are qualities rapists look for in their victims. So Zakir's advice isn't only ineffective, but it could also make women more vulnerable than before. While the Islamic veil may not protect you from getting raped, it will protect you from getting enough vitamin D. Multiple studies have shown that women who wear concealing clothing like the hijab have lower levels of vitamin D compared to women who wear more open, western clothing. Clothing. Vitamin D deficiency can lead to osteoporosis, and in children it can cause rickets. So there really is no practical reason for wearing the hijab. The only reason is because your book says so. But one of Nike's most unusual ideas is why you shouldn't eat pork. Pig today is one of the most shameless animal on the face of the earth. It enjoys seeing its spouse, seeing its mate have sex with his friend. In the Western countries, we have dance parties. After dance parties, we are swapping of wives. You sleep with my wife, I sleep with your wife. Do you think it's modest? And there is a scientific thing that you eat pig and you behave like pig. Welp, you heard it here, people. According to Zakir Naik, eating pork turns you into a cuck. I guess this is the Muslim equivalent of being a soy boy. Well, I scoured the internet trying to find any scientific studies to back up this claim, and shockingly, I could not find one. What I did find, however, was this article from islamweb.net. Could this be where Nike got the idea from? It is known to be very lazy and cuckold. It does not show any jealousy if another male pig attacks its partner. Anybody who eats it gets influenced by these bad habits. Well, if the idea here is that you behave like what you eat, then Muslims should be against eating rabbits. Rabbits are one of the most promiscuous animals in the world, and they're also known to eat their own droppings. But apparently, eating rabbits is totally fine in Islam. Oh, can you eat rabbits? Bunny rabbits? Will you ask, is it halal to eat it? It is halal. The Prophet ﷺ once was given, somebody hunted a rabbit and he gave him the thighs. He gave the thighs to the Prophet ﷺ and he accepted this gift. But of course, that isn't how things actually work. Eating a rabbit will not make you behave like a rabbit, just like how eating pig will not make you behave like a pig. But Zakir Naik's goal isn't to be factual, his goal is to promote Islam. So he has to deny science or distort science to make it fit with his religion even if it means spreading harmful misinformation. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, after my first episode, I was accused of going after low-hanging fruit. The thing is, when it comes to Islam, everything is low-hanging fruit. In the book of Nazi Rhymes, chapter 5, verse 2, lines 1 to 2, it says, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Now, why were they going up the hill alone? One's a boy, one's a girl. And we know in Islam that it is not permissible for the two genders to intermingle freely. 